I was I got really interested in trying to write a book that could explain the uh, kind of hypertext, hyperdelic, fantasy role-playing, rave, fractal <laughs> society that was emerging um, to people who didn't get that. You know, to the people who would laugh at you when you said you might someday be using email, which they did. They laughed, they laughed at us. Um, so I went around and looked at a lot of different cultures, and it, it occurred to me that the big difference was sort of between uh, Euclidean mathematics and chaos mathematics. Who is, who is dedicated to smoothing out the roughness of reality, and who is dedicated to surfing the roughness of reality for everything it's worth? So you have sort of the Euclideans on the one side, and then the Mandelbrot kind of fractal-loving snowboarders on the other. <laughs> so how do you explain the difference between, between skiing and snowboarding, between uh, you know, walking and skateboarding, between uh, playing shoots and ladders versus playing a video game, between um, team sports versus extreme sports? They all seemed to be to, to share the same quality of actually mining chaos for value versus avoiding chaos for decorum and clarity and linearity. So my whole my whole life really was about the difference between uh, the sort of linear narrative way of looking at the world, which I thought had pretty much ruined Western civilization over 2,000 years of, of you know, crisis, climax, relief, sort of the male orgasm curve of, of, of understanding whether it's applied to socialism or communism or Christianity or anything. And then this other sort of more Simpsonian, uh, uh, you know, mystery science theater sense of making connections between things and, and, and enjoying resonances and, and connection rather than just conclusion. Um, and it always seemed to me like comics sh had some of that quality in that comics were trying to tell a story sequentially and linearly at the same time. That comics bridged these two worlds. And I, I couldn't quite express it, but I knew there was something in there, that sort of low culture versus high culture, the sort of media viral quality of comics to release really potent ideas in seemingly candy shells. The, that, that comics embodied a lot of the uh, uh, seeming contradictions in a society moving from one state to the other. And then a friend of mine, who was my main sort of mega Gundam teacher, um, <laughs> said, oh, well, you've got to read Understanding Comics, which I think was in its pre-Harper version. There were like three versions. It wasn't the gold one, but it was the, the <laughs> one before the current one. Um, and it was like, I mean, here's, I'm a guy who's raised on Ong and McLuhan and Postman, right? That's where I come from. And then here's a guy who, with a pun, saying understanding comics is a pun on understanding media. Um, he's, he's saying, come to me, Douglas. I, I understand what you're saying and more. <laughs> so it basically, I read that and went, oh my god. that 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 this isn't just a suspicion about what comics are and can be, this is what comics are and can be. And the part that got me, of course, the most enthusiastic was this, this part about the gutter, you know, where you basically say that comics communicate uh, as much or more in the gutter between panels as they do in the panels themselves. And he has that great thing where he has the guy before the idea and the guy after the idea with the light bulb, but the finding of the idea is between the two. So what I wanted to do was write a comic book that took place in the gutters, which is which is what I ended up doing with this one called Testament, and it sort of, for me, made sense, because I think everything takes place in the gutter, but to have one story sort of be happening in the panels, and the other, like the sort of those old Aragonese things, you know, happening between um, between the panels, so I could actually play with the two narratives and take your idea sort of uh, in, my, in my direction, which is to say, let's not have an inferred gutter, let's actually yeah, live, in the gutter, live in the gutter, you know, <laughs> just live in the gutter, at the same time that we're trying to tell the other kind of story. But then I always wanted to meet him, and finally did when you got him to NYU ITP, right, where yeah. I teach with you, and I was like, ah, oh, he is real. <laughs> um, um, and, one, and then always had, I think it might have been Jeff Newell that actually had the idea to try to get us together on a thing, because we kind of come from different worlds, but reached a very similar place and set of conclusions about, about what they mean. 